Today I'll be installing a set of hood pins on the Tacoma, not because I want to, but because I have to. Oh, hell no. You have chosen wisely. All right, guys, yes, drilling another set of holes into my poor Tacoma today with the installation of some hood pins, which I'll get to in just a second. If you did not know, I have a weird issue. I'll show you in just a second with my hood, specifically the driver's side where it literally like sticks up. It feels like an inch. You can like see under the engine bay. Haven't been in an accident. I've messed with those rubber bumpers, the hood adjustment things underneath the hood, every which way it's not fixing it. And the passenger side is fine. And I'm going to install some hood pins because at highway speeds, the hood does sort of flutter a little bit and it makes me a little nervous that it's just going to come detached one day and wreck my truck pretty much. So slapping on a few hood pins today. My buddy Randy for Low Pro on Instagram installed the same set I'll be doing today. He said it's relatively easy and they've been fine for him so far. So I'll go over the exact same set with you guys today. And real quick before we get started, in case you miss any of my posts all across any kind of social media, I am now selling the Tacoma Holic windshield decal. These are the ones that fit perfectly at the top of your windshield at the lowest prices ever. You can get the two color ones right here for $30 shipped within the U.S. and the solid colors for $25. So I'll put a link in the description for my shop down below if you want to check those out. And these are a new style that are sort of split right there in the middle you can see and make the install a little easier I hope. And they have these shapes right here that you can just line up once you find the center line of your windshield. Currently I have the two colors in red and silver and then matte black and silver, solid colors in red, white, and matte black. If there is another color you would love to grab, just comment below and I'll see what I can do. But now we return you to our regular scheduled program. And here's what I'm talking about on the driver's side of the hood. The hood is closed. I haven't popped the latch or anything. It starts out, you know, just a little bit and gets progressively worse as I go down towards the headlight. And I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch gap right there. I can easily fit my finger under there. Eyesore for sure. I'm hoping the hood pin might help suck that hood down the gap just a little bit. My buddy said it didn't work with his truck and he has the same issue that I have. So if you guys know what's causing this, please comment below. I would assume from maybe off-road stress, but it's kind of weird how it'd be only pronounced like on the driver's side versus the passenger side, which I'll show you right now. You can see passenger side, I guess there's a tiny bit of a gap, but I at least maybe a third of the other side. So have no idea what's going on with that. And here is the hood pin set I will be installing. It is from Steadion. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to grab the exact same one. I want to say it was around 50 bucks, so not too bad. Hood pin sets get expensive quickly, so I'm going to try this one out. Like I said, my buddy Randy's been running it for God, probably like five or six months now without any issues. It is the push style, so you just depress the middle right here and it releases the top of the striker versus the latch kind. So all I have to do is cut a circular hole in the hood once I get everything lined up. So less invasive that way, the latch style, it's usually like a teardrop or at least a rectangle shape. So I'm gonna go with this right now. So you've got all the pieces right here with the hardware and I'll show you what you need to get everything installed. Okay guys, here's everything you need for the install. You got a Dremel with some deburring bits, some blue tape or masking tape to mark off the area. The paint of your choice since you will be leaving some bare metal surfaces in the hood to make sure that doesn't rust, some kind of marker automatic center punch, and this is an inch and a half hole saw bit specifically for metal to cover the bottom of the strike where it's actually gonna stick through the hood. And then I'll just round that out with the deburring bit. And of course a drill with some step bits. I'll put links for all of this stuff in the description below. Okay guys, as far as the placement of the strikes are concerned here on like the radiator support front large piece of metal right there, a lot of cars have like holes already in there that you can use, not so much on the Tacoma. My buddy Randy put it right here on the I guess inside, towards the inside of the engine bay of this headlight support right here, he put it right there. And he said if he could do it over again, he probably wouldn't because if I lower the hood a little bit, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but it lines up right about here and it's like a rounded area. So he said if he could do it over, he'd do it on the other side of the headlight support because that lines up in this area, which is relatively flat. So that is what I did. I already drilled these holes yesterday. Uh, you can see one right there, same on the other side and put some of my paint on them. Put the strikes in just to make sure they work. So the first part is to figure out where you want the strikes. And again, be aware, at least on the second gens, you have this area right here to deal with. Obviously you don't want the strikes to be anywhere where it's gonna hit that diagonal. So roughly mine are gonna be in this area right here. 
And when you are trying to figure out placement for the strikes right here, you can see how long they are. I want to say they're just a little over four inches. You'd have to be mindful because the headlight on the second gens is literally right under this bar. So where I drill the hole, it is just about as close as I can get to the side of the headlight down here without actually hitting it. That way I can avoid trimming the bolt. And one other thing I forgot to mention that you need for this earlier is toothpaste because gingivitis is the number one cause of all hood pin failures. Actually, toothpaste is the easiest thing to use, anything that's sort of like thick and goopy. We're going to dab just a little bit of the toothpaste on the tip of the strike right there. Carefully lower the hood and see where it hits to give us a rough point to where we need to drill through. And that's where the fun begins. Mmm, minty. And as you can see, that worked like a charm. Got my point where I need to drill, if the reflection will show it, right here on the inside of the hood adjustment tab or whatever you call these things. And of course, this is a good time to eyeball just to make sure. I'll get my measuring tape out in just a little bit just to measure to make sure it's equal on both sides. Uh, but I mean, it, this one looks like it's a little in, but I've already drilled a hole down there and honestly, it's on the other side of the hood. If it's a quarter inch off, I'll still be able to sleep at night. Maybe not, but I'll give it a shot. Okay guys, getting ready to drill. I did forget you do need some kind of moving mat because you don't want those metal shavings under your engine bay. So go ahead and set something out. And I used my automatic center punch. Probably not gonna show up on camera, but I do have a hole mark right there at the tip of my fingernail. And then of course wiped off the toothpaste. So I'm gonna start. It looks like this is like the bottom layer of a, the two layer of the hood with the second layer of course being the top surface. So I'm gonna start with the inch and a half hole saw bit because I'm going to need to make this a little wider anyway to be able to screw the bottom piece on. And then after I cut through just the bottom layer with that, I will use a regular drill bit to start the hole that's going to actually poke through the top of the hood. When you do this, make sure to try to do it as perpendicular to the surface as possible, which is sort of difficult since the hood's going to be in an angle, but just be aware of that. Okay guys, so that first part went easier than expected. I did drill with the blade spinning in reverse. It gave me a little more control since the, this is sort of like an uneven surface right here. And I was being a little paranoid because it was sort of hard to tell how close that inner or top layer of the hood was, but if it's gonna show up on there, there's an at least a two inch air gap. So don't be worried about like poking through and then damaging the hood on the other sides. So now that that's done, I'm going to flip the towel back, put the toothpaste back on the strike the ends of the strikes and close the hood again so I can get a perfect placement for the toothpaste right up here and get that as straight as possible. Okay guys, quick tip since I had to do, redo this like three times to get the second toothpaste mark on the very top of the hood, before you try to do that for the second time once you're going through this first layer, make sure you clean off the backside because there are so many like dirt spots I couldn't tell what was dirt and what was toothpaste. Uh, be mindful this is sharp, sort of gave myself a few little micro cuts. And of course, for mine, since this side was higher, I had to adjust these up probably much higher than they're gonna sit when it's all said and done, just so the toothpaste would actually touch, given that extra gap at the top. So you might have to do it a few times, be patient, you'll get it. So now, phase two of the drilling. I'm gonna start with a pilot hole through the bottom and then hole saw bit from the top. And for that downward hole, I went ahead and put a shoe box under the hood just so I can sort of push down here without getting too close to hitting anything. Even though, of course, there's that second layer of metal underneath that layer of the hood anyway. Okay, well, that was fun. As you can see, I need to adjust the hood strikes up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, then get out my Dremel and smooth off this edge and get some paint on it. Okay guys, it is a couple days later because I made a huge, stupid, massive mistake. So if you don't take anything else away from this video, listen to what I'm about to tell you. There is a small like retaining ring that threads onto the bottom of the hood pin. This goes in from the bottom side of the hood and attaches from the other side to hold it in place once you put some like threaded rods in there. And I don't have it on there right now, but as I had the top part on, I was going to thread this in and I let it slip out of my fingers. I never make mistakes like this. And the whole damn thing slid down into my hood. It is lodged somewhere in the corner over there. So 
don't make that mistake. Get a towel or something and just like a microfiber cloth and stuff it back here. So if you do let this drop, it's not going to go anywhere. And of course, be careful when you'll see in just a minute when I thread the small threaded studs into the bottom of this to hold it into place. So just be aware of that. I've got the driver side here all done. I got it fitted. Everything's good. So I'll go ahead and do the passenger side. And I forgot to film it, but I did widen these up. These initially were that inch and a half circular cut. I widened that up sort of like a rectangle or trapezoid just to give me room to fit this in and enough space to get the allen key in there to thread in all those threaded rods. And of course, before you get to this point, just make sure you double check so the hood is fully closed with the middle, I guess the factory latch and the hood pin over here. You can see that part is fully in the correct position. Just make sure the top of the strike lines up roughly in the center of the hole so it'll be easy to align with the bottom once you get everything into place. And I didn't mention it earlier, but this is the part that goes in the top of the hood. Obviously, the bottom does have a nice, like, rubber or neoprene ring, ring right there. I can never speak when I'm recording for you guys. So you're not going to have that metal-to-metal -metal contact on the hood surface. And before you thread this onto the bottom, go ahead and take three of those threaded rods and use the Allen key to get them started so it will be easier to get those in without risking dropping them into your hood like I did this whole piece. Okay, and the safest way I found to install that bottom ring to the top piece without actually dropping it like I did is to just get it, like hold it into place from the bottom. And you can see this is already halfway done. It does still stick up quite a bit. And once you're holding the bottom piece, just twist the top piece until it is tight. That way, all the movement's up here and you're not going to risk like cutting your hands on that sharp metal underneath. Okay, you guys, next up begins the fun process of adjusting the height of the strike that is actually mounted to under the underside there. You can see I have this fully closed center factory one good driver's side good. This one, it's not contacting, so I just have to raise it a little bit. I guess I'll raise it like a quarter inch and see if that works. And took a few tries, some little minor adjustments, but I got both hood pins working now. I'll pop the hood in just a second and show you those measurements to give you like a good base point. But as an added bonus, check this out. I'll put the other footage on the screen before I did the hood pins, but remember this nasty gap right here. Yes, it's still there. I play with this a little bit. This seems about as tight as I can get it, but before I can still, I guess, squeeze my finger in there. It's definitely a little tighter right now. That's what she said. <laughs> Hopefully that it feels like it sucked this nasty side of the hood down just a little bit. And now, of course, with those installed to pop the hood, just to press both of the new hood pins. A little tight and open your hood latch on the inside like normal. Okay guys, and just to give you a baseline, after I got the nuts tightened on both sides, this one from the, I guess where it's mounted right here by the washer, is sticking up two and three eighths inches, and the driver side is two and a half, so just a little bit higher, I assume, because the hood is off on that side. Again, that's just a baseline for you guys to, I guess, sort of eyeball the starting position for these to make it, you know, save you a little time getting those adjusted later on after the install. Your application may vary, of course. All right, everybody, that will do it for this video. Make sure you comment below if you plan on installing hood pins yourself, whether you're going to go with this kit, which again is linked in the description below, or another brand for the hood pin installation. And if you can figure out what's going on with that weird hood situation with the gapping, please comment below and let me know. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi.